Good evening, everyone. Good evening. We're just going to sing a handful of songs before we start the official portion. We're going to start out with 590 590. That's O Worship the King. 590. We'll sing all three verses. O worship the King, all glorious above, and gratefully sing His wonderful love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilion and splendor, Thy bountiful care, what tongue can recite? It breathes in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends to the plain. And sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. Frail children of dust and feeble as frail. In thee do we trust, nor find thee to fail. Thy mercies, how tender, how firm to the end. Our Maker, Defender, Redeemer, and Friend. Let's go with 602. There's a habitation. We'll sing all three. There is a habitation built by the living God for all of every nation who seek that grand abode. Marching to Zion. 
Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thus surround the throne. And thus surround the throne. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Let those refuse to sing who never knew our God. The children of the heavenly King, the children of the heavenly King, May speak their joys abroad, may speak their joys abroad. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Then let our songs abound and every tear be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground to fairer sun high to fairer worlds on high we're marching to zion beautiful beautiful zion we're marching upward to zion the beautiful city of god 177, I know that my Redeemer lives. We'll do one, two, and four. One, two, and four. I know that my Redeemer lives and ever prays for me. I know eternal life he gives from sin and sorrow free. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life he gives. I know, I know that my Redeemer
since we have just a few minutes left until seven, let's make this our final one before we get this whole thing started. It's 8S if you can step them in a book or you can look in the PowerPoint. We'll sing through it twice. You are beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for words, too wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp? Wisdom. Who can fathom the death of your love? You are beautiful beyond description, majesty. Good evening. It's good to be with you. Glad that you have made this Tuesday night a part uh, of your day to be here with us at the Jacksonville Church of Christ. If you're visiting with us, we would like for you to know that we're very happy to have you. Jeff Archie is going to be our speaker this evening. Uh, he's no stranger to this congregation. He's been here before. And he's the voice right now of not just PTP, but I guess the International Gospel Hour. And do not forget about the booths. I want to make mention of those very quickly. They have been replenished. And look through the booths that we have, the Memphis School of Preaching booth, as well as the Tri-City School of Preaching uh, booths are both set up, um, as well as the Voice of Truth International the Gospel Journal, International Gospel Hour, Gospel Broadcasting Network, Apologetics Press, 
as well as World Video Bible School, all of those, and there's a plethora of material out there. Uh, GBN has sent uh, quite a few DVDs, one on the book of Romans, as well as the book, I believe it's 2 Corinthians, as well as other DVDs. World Video Bible School has sent books and DVDs. Um, don't just pick these things up. Consider if it's a magazine, such as the Gospel Journal, subscribing to it. And if it's a work, consider um, supporting the work. And as far as the preaching schools, if you've never supported a preacher student, consider that as well. And David B. Jones from the Tri-City School of Preaching and Michael Clark from Memphis is, would be happy to talk to you about support of their preacher students. Uh, we do have one announcement before we begin, and I would like for Mike Cole to write this name down. Uh, Spencer Rayleigh needs to be mentioned in our prayers. This is um, Edith Shanks, and this is the wording, grandson-in-law. And he is having, he's in the emergency surgery, he's in emergency surgery for appendicitis. So he's going to be having his appendix taken out. So this this evening. So please keep him, Spencer Rayleigh, in our prayers. At this time, we're going to turn our services over to John Parker. He's going to be leading our singing. And Mike Cole's going to lead our opening prayer. And Ben Hirsch is going to lead us in a closing prayer at the proper time. Number 730. Number 730. Wonderful story of love. We'll sing the first and third verse. Wonderful story of love. Tell it to me again. Wonderful story of love. Wake the immortal strain. Angels with rapture announce it. Shepherds with wonder receive it. Sinner, oh, won't you believe? Wonderful story of love, wonderful, 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 wonderful story of love, wonderful story of love, Jesus provides a above us with those who've gone on before us singing the rapturous chorus wonderful story of love wonderful 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 Fifty-three, number six fifty-three. After which we'll have our opening prayer. Sing all three verses. Number six hundred fifty-three. Of one the Lord has made the race. Through one has come the fall. Where sin has gone, must go its grace. The gospel is for all. The blessed gospel is for all. The gospel is for all. Where sin has gone, must go his grace. The gospel is for all. Say not the heathen are at home. Beyond we have no call. For why should we be blessed alone? The gospel is for all. The blessed gospel is for all. The gospel is for all. Where sin has gone must go his grace. The gospel is 
Bow with me as we go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we humbly approach thy throne of grace and mercy, Father, we give thanks for this beautiful day, and Father, for another privilege and opportunity that you've allowed us to assemble together to sing songs of praise, Father, and to hear another portion of your word proclaimed. Heavenly Father, we pray for the message of the hour. We're thankful for Brother Jeff and his willingness and ability to teach and preach your word and father we pray that everything that we hear we can meditate in our hearts and our minds those things that we need to apply to our life father that where we can be stronger in the faith father and more knowledgeable and a better servant for thee father we thank you for each and every one that's present here tonight father we Pray your continued blessings be upon this congregation here at Jacksonville and the work taking place. We're thankful for the elders and the deacons and pray, Father, that all that's said and done here tonight will be in accordance with your word and bring honor and glory to your name. Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for those that are sick, especially the one that was mentioned tonight, Father Spencer Rayleigh the grandson-in-law of Sister Edith Shanks. We pray, Father, that you would be with the medical staff that are attending to his needs, that, that do just those things that would help him and comfort him, Father. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for your son, Jesus, that gave his life at Calvary on our behalf, that through his sacrifice and our obedience, we can have salvation, redemption, forgiveness of sins, and eventually a home of eternal life with thee when this life is over. Heavenly Father, please be with us throughout the remainder of this service and on through the future walks of life. Father, forgive us of our sins and forgive us where we fail thee. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Number 162. Number 162 will be the song before the lesson. If you would stand. <clears throat> Sing the first and last. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to Ah. Uh -huh. 
Invitation will be number 442. Number 442. How grateful we are that indeed he lives. Because he lives, we have the wonderful words of life that we can tell others that he lives. We have the gospel message that is for all the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. He lives. And to God be the glory. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 57. And it is such a joy to be here tonight. To be part of your second annual Abiding Word lectures. The Abiding Word that brings us birth in Jesus Christ. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23. The Word that continues to strengthen us as we grow as disciples of Christ. John 8 and verse 31, and the word of faith of which we preach with proclamation, with boldness and strength, Romans 10 and verse 8. Of course, this being the theme, preach the word, and as each speaker has lessons assigned tonight, my lesson assignment is that they may teach others. When we come to the end of this lesson, that lesson will change from that they may teach others to that we may teach others. Whenever you're given an assignment, you step down, you look at the assignment, and you just start brainstorming. And I thought that they may teach others. Where is that? Well, Titus 2 and verse 4, that they may teach. And it's referring to the aged women, that they may teach the younger women. And Titus deals with what the aged women, I say that with respect, what the aged women would instruct the younger women, and then likewise the men would do the same to the younger men, the aged men. And when I looked at that a little closer, that word teach caught my eye, and I started looking a little bit. Now, I don't get into a lot of different Greek words. I think about the late brother Tom Holland, and I echo what he says. I know a little Greek, and he runs a restaurant in Nashville. I am not the Greek scholar, so for me to try to quote Greek is a challenge for me, so I try to say, let me get that on the simple level that I can get it, and if I can get it, I know everybody else can. That word teach in the original language is the only word in the Greek that you find in the New Testament, and it's translated in the King James and the New King James Version as teach. Now, as you'll see in a little bit, it has some other translation, and you'll see why, because of the depth of the word. It takes that Greek word for teaching, and it puts on the front of that Greek word the meaning of good. So good teaching. Now we know teaching is good, but when you see that word added, there's an emphasis there on good teaching. And then that word teaching goes a little stronger in the Greek to where it's not simply, not only good, but it's also a teaching that takes action. It's a word that not only teaching or telling, but it shows how it's done. Now, when you look at Titus 2, 4, and 5, you grasp that. It takes more than just to say how it's done, but to show how it's done and to be involved with it. My wife and I have come across the old rerun, and we watch it the first time around, Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman. Now, some of you may be familiar with that show. It's a show out west in the 1800s. Has a character in it named Robert E. He is the town blacksmith. And I noticed this the other day. We were watching it, and he is stoking his fire there as he's working on the horseshoes. And he takes that big old bellows, and he starts pumping, 
pumps the iron, stokes the fire, keeps it hot, keeps it at its very best. Well, the idea of this word for teach means that you take a bellow or a fan, you breeze this, you raise a breeze, if you will. You put air in motion, you kindle it. It's not only the simple instruction of words, but it's the action. How is this done? How is this shown? And when you think about it, our Lord Jesus Christ was probably one of the best in not only instruction, but to develop the skill of his apostles, his disciples, and the same for us today. How about when Nicodemus came to Jesus by night in John 3 and verse 2 and acknowledged that he was a teacher of miracles. No man can do this unless he was from God. And then when we think of Jesus, that his teaching would move others to give him an answer right then. This is a sad illustration, but it's where he says, one of you will deny me to where Judas, after he is given the sop, the bread, master, is it I? Matthew 26 and verse 25. Sad illustration, but bringing him to that answer. How Jesus would take his apostles when they would go on the sea to row the boat, if you will, in Mark 4.35. The feeding of the 5,000, handing out the food, taking up the fragments thereafter as we see in John 6.10-13. through 13. To send them to secure the donkey that he may enter in and the instruction they were to follow, Mark 1, 11, or Mark 11, verses 1 and following. Preparing the Passover, Matthew 26 and verse 17. Not only to teach or instruct as I am doing by word, but other words translated in a number of translations for that teach would be words like urge, train admonish, encourage, chasten, make. How about this one? Schooling. Schooling an individual to do more in teaching. So tonight, friends, I want to urge us. I want to push us. I want us to think about in teaching others that at the end, not that they may teach, but that we may teach. I want us to think tonight in some areas that we're very familiar with, but what I want to do with each area is I want to bring forth within each area some applications that we can put to work and to think about the power of the message of which we proclaim, which we teach, and to grow within our abilities to do so. I want you to notice with me, first of all, number one, that they may teach others, let's start in the home. That's where it all begins in the home. How about this? Three things. How about Bible examples? Now, I'm not talking about examples from Scripture, but I am talking about the phrase that was one time said that children imitate to what parents dedicate. You see, our parents are our examples. The number one example in a child's life, that child's parents. And if parents do not have the boundaries themselves, how will their children develop? And this is a teaching from the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 6, beginning with verse 4. And ironically, another chapter 6 and verse 4 in the New Testament, the book of Ephesians. And so in both Old Testament and New Testament, we find where we are instructed or the parents are instructed to be the right example in guiding, in leading their children. Let's think about number two, Bible time. I want to talk about something that I have found over the past few years really stands out. And that is time at home with the family and what we would call a period of Bible time. Take mom and dad, Bible time with the children. Are you not encouraged in the scripture to find a 12-year-old Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 2 and verse 49 to tell his mother, how is it that you sought me? Know ye not that I must be about my father's business? How in 2 Kings chapter 22, Josiah was a youth about his father's business? How in 1 Timothy 4 and verse 12, Timothy, with his example of the believers, a youth about his father's business. 
that from a child he knew the Holy Scriptures, which was able to make him wise unto salvation, 1 Timothy 3 and verse 15, brought forth by his mother, by his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice in 2 Timothy 1 and verse 5. To think about that time with children to where the wise man Solomon said to remember our Creator in the days of our youth, Ecclesiastes 12, 1, and how children can learn. I remember as a boy, my cousins and I, that we would, and, and we meant it with reverence, but a lot of you know what I'm talking about. We would, as we'd say, we'd play church. Somebody would preach, somebody would pray, somebody would lead the singing, and we did so, we called it playing church, we were children, but we followed what we saw within worship from our parents and from the aged members, the older members. And it's interesting that Bible time at home strengthens in many ways you don't realize. I'm amazed of Bible time at home with children and the parallel how well the children, those little ones, will behave in worship. But they are taught that this is the time at home of Bible time and they're instructed how to come forth in the worship. I'm grateful for men like Joe Wells of Kyle Publication and my old friend from Eastside days in Cleveland, Wesley Skelton and his wife Denise and their old podcast of Arrows in Our Hands. And for Rob Baker and there are others who do well with Bible time and to instruct. Joe and his boys, for example, Joe Wells and his boys did some videos back during the time of COVID when we were all sheltered in place and how they would use that to spend time that people could use those videos in the evening. And recently we've been sharing those on our International Gospel Hour television broadcast, encouraging families, hey, take your time at home and have that Bible time, that time together and the great difference it makes. So when you have Bible examples, parents, Bible time with the family, let's think about the third B, Bible school, and how we can use the Bible school here in the local church to help us. Sad enough, it is very sad, that some of our boys and girls, the only Bible they get is when they come to Bible class. And while that is good, it's simply not good enough but rather how the Bible school can help our homes and can help us. Now tonight I'm going to interject some things along the way to help us, things that I note in my travels, things through the years that I hope will help us, not only for those of us here, but for those that may be viewing us through the YouTube channel tonight. With the Bible school and for our children, your children need to be in a Bible class of the age or the grade that they are in. This may shock you, friends, but one study that I actually conducted, I was curious, of children that would come, and in the teenage years, they want <clears throat> to help in a Bible class. Now, there's nothing wrong with help in a Bible class if it goes through the elders that think it is proper for that young person to help that teacher in a class but not for an indefinite period of time. I'm talking about, I don't want to go to my class, I'll go in here. Here's a second one. Of somebody that wants to stay in the same Bible class beyond their ages. Or they'll stay in a class when they are older. This is going to shock you folks. But the percentages of young people remaining faithful that parents allow such decision and such things to be done, the percentage of them remaining faithful is very low, less than 10%. Now you may wonder how. Okay, can I ask you a question? Would you let your child go to the public school and be a principal every day? Would you let your child go to the public school and be the teacher's assistant every day? Now, you and I both know, and folks, if you'll allow me to use a Tennessee phrase, you and I both know that dog don't hunt. That doesn't work. 
We need to make certain that our boys and girls have Bible classes in the local church that will help them as they strive to grow in Christ. Now, when I was a teenager, in the congregation I was in due to size, I taught younger classes, but I made sure that I was in another class or that was arranged that way to make sure that I could have a class. We know there are circumstances that do happen. May I also mention this. For Bible school, don't be on time. Be before time. You ever notice that a baseball team many times does not, you don't get there and then walk right on the field and start playing? What do you do? You warm up. You get yourself ready. Sometimes we show greater reverence to our athletic events for our children to get them there before time and not late than we do our own children in the Bible school work. Parents, this is a moment of exhortation. It's to help us to bring the things in perspective and to help us as it all starts in the home, the examples, the education, the exhortation. Let's continue this thought. I want to move a little bit more. Number two, that they may teach others in the Bible school. I'm looking at that in the first point as the commitment of the parents. Now, parents, let's have a little help for you in that Bible school that we may teach others. The Bible school effort in the local church must never be underestimated. I am encouraged to look over here to my left and your right, and for those of you sitting here, you gotta turn around totally, but 158 on Sunday morning in Bible school, 171 in worship. There are a lot of congregations that would love to have that type of percentile. That shows a dedication here in Bible school and the work of which you put forth in Bible classes. But let's look at three things here about teaching others within the Bible school. They all start now with the letter M. How about member? Everybody must be a member of the Bible school. Go back to the Bible examples I talked about earlier. The examples of parents, parents that will have their children at Bible class will also be in Bible class. And the example put forth again from Deuteronomy 6 as well as Ephesians 6. How about the word motivate? Let's talk a little bit more of teaching others, thinking of that definition that we noted a little earlier. That not only instruction of word, but application, taking, creating things. The word creativity comes within this. Not only are we teaching or instructing, but we are involving our classes to be in the work of the Lord. Ask yourselves this, Bible school teachers, with an Acts 6 approach, how can my class, how can this work, how can what we study help with the preaching of the gospel or help our evangelism? Have you ever considered in the New Testament when they brought forth the teaching, when they brought forth the work or the work of benevolence, it had an evangelistic aim within it. And then in our Bible school, Teachers, look at every one of your classes as your mission field. I can only think of the impact made to where there is a child that brings a friend to Bible class. And that friend is learning things that they've never heard before. And I can imagine that teacher sometime during that week finding where that child lives going up to the door, knocking on the door, stepping back from the porch a little bit. The mother comes to the door. You introduce yourself. Little Johnny or little Susie was in my class, and I promise you when little Johnny or little Susie comes out from behind mama and takes a look at who you are, their face is going to light up. Let me tell you something, folks. If you want to touch the heart of a parent or a grandparent, brag on their children. Let them know how much you appreciate them, allowing them to come with you. What's to say that that will open a door to where you could study with that parent who wants to learn more about Christ? You have a wonderful love for your child and allow your child to come to Bible class. I know you must have a love for God too. We'd love for you to come as well. Think about how you can look upon the children as that mission field to get to know your parents better to your children. I mean, do not the public schools have parents' nights to where they go and meet the children's teachers? 
And sometimes the teacher will advise about what to do and, 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 and how the child is doing and areas that child can improve. I can remember as a boy, I had a very difficult time pronouncing any word with a T-H. Tomb, timble. I had the hardest time. And the teacher caught it, told my mother, and I remember there was a good, I found out later, a brother in Christ, Tipton Curd. I will not forget that name. He worked with me, pointed out how to say, what to do. And it, I know there were times it was just hard. But one day, I'm by myself and I'm thinking about it. Thimble, thumb, hey, I got it. I'm getting it. And I can remember sitting down with him. And I remember when he pointed those words, I was ready. I was ready to hit everything with a TH in the proper way. You know, I'm grateful for the teacher that saw that I needed the help. And when we look at our Bible school to where teachers and parents work together, how can this help our child, our children, and to work together? Teachers, you need ongoing training. Keith mentioned about polishing the pulpit where I know so many of you and, and those early days, but how people would come. In Jacksonville, you sowed that seed and you rooted that deep. And even to this day, people will come and leave as better servants to be better Bible school teachers, to have opportunities to teach, to be creative in what we do. And to think about 1 Peter 4.11, that not only do we speak as the oracles of God, but if any man minister or put forth that effort, let him do so with the ability God has given him. And so we are able to motivate as teachers for our students and then help our students to become the disciples of Christ, Christians, disciples that are taught that they will in turn teach. It thrills my soul that although I have moved on from the east side work, to look in their bulletin and to see names of boys and girls that I remember as children that are now teaching in that school, in that, pub, in that Bible school program. That thrills my soul, and I'm thankful for that. But we need to motivate ourselves. Can I move on with this third one? How about materials? Church, got to talk to you a minute. We need to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 2 Peter 3.18. We need to be better in our motivation and our materials. Let's never underestimate the areas where we teach, our classrooms. Folks, got to be honest. There's some material that needs to go. There are better materials, better options. You can take a lot of Bible school material you no longer use, and a good brother up in Kentucky, Brian Hall, can put that to work in mission areas that they, they don't even know what a phone is, but they'll read everything they can get. And so we have that opportunity. But to freshen our rooms, every quarter that we teach something and that quarter ends, we need to freshen that classroom. We need to look for opportunities. Brothers, can I talk to you for a moment? Very kindly, very gracefully, but I gotta be honest. Men, we're just not good at it. Now, you tell a brother the subject he's got to teach, he'll prepare and teach it. But you try to tell a brother to decorate a classroom, to move things around, he's liable to have a heart attack before he can get started. Now, let me say this. Brothers, maybe we need to change our approach. Why don't you look at the classroom that you'll teach in like you would look at your workshop at the house. How you would improve, how you would add something, how you'd move things around, how you could do it. I've got to admit, it was a struggle for me. Years ago, I'm teaching in the Engraving Heavenly Truths curriculum, The Devil, Sin, and Hell. Now, boy, you talk about a series that's going to motivate young people. The Devil, Sin, and Hell, and we hit a stretch where we were talking about some of the meanest, rebellious people you could ever imagine in the Bible. Now, there's two ways to learn. You can learn how to do it right, and you can learn by how not to do it wrong. 
and learn from the mistakes of others. And I'm thinking, now how can I get this thing across? So I reached out to one of my students at the time at the Nashville School, I'm sorry, the Chattanooga School of Preaching, who was a school teacher. And I said, Johnny, help me here. I'm looking for ideas. What can I do in setting up my classroom? Have you got some thoughts? He said, well, Jeff, something that we do, that I do, we have a current events board. You know, people, you know, the kids, my students are encouraged to bring articles or things on current events that we can look at and deal with. And I'm thinking, current events board, and I'm talking about people of the past and letting my wheels turn, and all of a sudden it hits me. I had a bulletin board in a classroom. It wasn't a square classroom. It was a long classroom. Keith, you may remember. It's a classroom upstairs at the east side. It was a longer room, longer than it was wide. And I'm always fooling with something. I'm always changing something around. And I had a bulletin board, and I looked at all those people, and I thought, boy, these are some bad boys in the Bible. Ha, 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 I created my bad boy board. And just to show that I was up with it, I spelled bad with two D's. My bad boy board. And I put all those characters in the Bible who were wicked, who were wrong. I put it in red and black. Red means stop. Black means darkness. I mean, I wanted to make that thing. I didn't want to say I want to make it look satanic now. But I wanted it to catch attention. And I flipped the chairs around. Kids would come in the room wondering which way they were going to turn in class that week. It was probably one of the most enjoyable classes I had ever done. And to spend time with the kids and to help them see. And then when we spent time looking at the bad boys, we didn't want them to go in that direction or the bad girls too. Here's my point with all of this, folks. We're always searching, always looking. How can we refresh how can we upgrade our Bible classes, our rooms, to where we're reaching out? And I hope that I've brought a few thoughts here on the Bible school that we may teach others, that they may teach others. And so from this, we've got members all involved, members motivated, updated and fresh material because, dear friends, it's needful because there are those that are looking we have taken the home. We've come out into the church. How about a third one? That they may teach others one-on-one. -on -one. I arrived here today and a Bible study was going on. What a wonderful thing. How that we can go one-on-one -on -one to take those that are outside the home, outside the church, to present the Savior of which we were singing about earlier with His wonderful words of life that He came to seek and to save that which was lost, Luke 19, 10. For us to carry forth the great commission of telling others the message of the gospel of Christ, Matthew 28, 18, and Mark 16, and Luke 24, and of course John 20. And to think about the evangelism that we do. I know for some time, Yet your work with Back to the Bible and the good work of the Whitakers and the School of Evangelism. And, and I've known Rob and Nicole for many years and I love what they do. And how I have used that work in my work. And how recently Rob gave us permission to take Back to the Bible and put it into International Gospel Hour 14 radio lessons of Back to the Bible that we plan on taking and launching in a series that we can send to people in personal study. That was a joy to do that. And when we think about how we can sit down and study, I do miss that in local work. I do miss that in sitting down and at a kitchen table and studying the Bible with somebody and talking with them. Would you take these three things? They all begin with the letter I. How about in interest? And I want to borrow a friend by the name of Philip from Acts chapter 8. You know, when Philip ran to the chariot, boy, talk about still in motivation from being scattered abroad in Acts 8 and verse 4. Philip ran to that chariot where that eunuch was. And he had interest. He asked the eunuch that question to gain interest. Acts 8 verse 30, do you understand what you're reading? He's coming back from worship. He's reading Isaiah the prophet. He's there in the chariot. Here comes Philip running to him. Do you understand what you're reading? What a great question. 
How about then the instruction where Philip began at the same scripture and preached unto him, taught him Jesus, Acts 8 and verse 35. And Philip was consistent with his teaching to the eunuch, just like he was in those earlier in Samaria in Acts 8 and verse 35. He taught concerning the authority of Christ. He taught concerning the kingdom of Christ. He taught also concerning one being baptized into Christ. How do we know that? Because he baptized the eunuch in Acts 8, 38 and 39. He believed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. There's the authority. He was added to the Lord's church. And then the eunuch went on his way rejoicing. I would love to read the rest of that account. Wouldn't you love to get to heaven, go up to the eunuch and say, tell me what you did when you got home. Tell me what you did in Queen Candace or Queen Candace's household. What did you do? And you see, we're taught from the Great Commission in Matthew 28, verse 20, teaching them to observe. Now we involve those. There's the interest. There is the instruction. And then we are involving those to be active in the Lord's work. There was a young man that obeyed the gospel. And when he obeyed the gospel, the very next Sunday I went up to the deacon and I said, the very next Sunday, the next time, get him up reading scripture. Let's start him right there. I grew up in an era where whenever you were asked to do something in worship, you did not say no to that older brother. You didn't say no. Now, if there was a reason that you couldn't do it, that was one thing, but you didn't say no. You got up and you did your very best. And you always found out that when you do your very best for God, He wants, that's exactly what He wants. And when you think about involving or observing, does that not build on the definition, that unique definition of the word teach? To not only observe or instruct, but now you move them onward to where they will be those that will teach. They will be those that will instruct. And we need to take that to a world that is without Jesus Christ. All right, let's see where we are so far. That they may teach in the home and then in the church. And now evangelistically, how about that they may teach others? And I want to talk about something special here through the media. Have you ever thought about there was social media in the New Testament? It was. You think about it. The media was in the New Testament. The good news. Media, another word, is news. News that needs to be spread. What better news than the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ? Romans 1.16. The message that Jesus said we are to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 16 and verse 15. There's no greater message. And think about all the opportunities they had. Social media, well, they communicated with each other. They were social. Look at the latter part of Acts chapter 2. And how at the latter part of Acts chapter 2, when you wind up in verse 47, they were praising God and having favor with all the people. They used the opportunity of everything before them. There's Peter and John in Acts chapter 3. They are going to... The, to the temple to pray. There's that lame man at the gate, been there for years. Lifted him, raised him up. He started walking and leaping and praising God. I would head too. And when he was leaping and walking and praising God, people were seeing what happened. What did Peter and John do? They brought the media. And then you had the government authorities that would arrest them. And how that they would bring them before the rulers. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 5, they brought the media. They started teaching that good news. And then in Acts chapter 5, 28 and 29, we ought to obey God rather than men. They brought the media. A little side note here. Did it ever occur to you that the apostle Paul allowed the Roman government to fund his missionary journeys? I was reading the other day book of Acts. when Paul said, I appeal to Caesar. Well, if he appeals to Caesar, then to Caesar he must go. <laughs> Y'all just paid for his missionary journey. The government sent him right to Caesar's household to where Paul would say later how he taught those in Caesar's household. Absolutely amazing. Oh my, how the Lord opens doors. Back to Acts chapter 5. What about daily? In the temple and house to house, they brought the media. 
When they were scattered abroad everywhere preaching the word, they just took the media out through all the world. Acts 8 and verse 4. And the end result you and I find in Colossians chapter 1, as we note verses 23, if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. Wow, first century. They got it out there. And then I submit to you, verses 26 and 27, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The three things here all start with O. Don't miss the opportunities of the New Testament. They took advantage of every opportunity before them. And they taught in unique places. Singing in a jail cell in the middle of the night, you convert the jailer. Going along the seashore, there's one by the name of Lydia. It is amazing the doors that the Lord opened. Did he not tell the church at Philadelphia in Philippians 3 and verse 8? Or I'm sorry, Revelation 3 and verse 8. You have a little strength. I put before you an open door. Oh, how the Lord opens doors. The opportunities that are there. Let me give you another one. What about online? I don't have to tell you. You know, we're on YouTube tonight. For example, YouTube is one of the, it's the second largest search engine on the internet. If people are going to watch something on television, that is not over the air television, chances are they will go online to YouTube. A lot of people love to watch YouTube. Brothers, listen to me. If you need to fix something at your house and you don't know how to fix it, go to YouTube. You will find it out there. And, well, I shouldn't have said that because now if you don't go to YouTube, your wife now knows to go to YouTube. But nevertheless, YouTube, I mean, I mean it's out there. How many churches have moved to their own YouTube channel and showing and presenting the worship there on YouTube? How about when we talk online? What about the simple thing as this little tool right here to where half the world's population walks around with a cell phone, with a smartphone, an Android? There are people, I've been told, out in some of the brush areas throughout the world where there's very little makeshift roofs and dusty floors, but they walk around with an iPhone because of all the information that's there. Folks, it's right there at our fingertips. Downloading an app, listening to a podcast, the percentage of podcasts grow and grow and grow. A quick example with our work at International Gospel Hour, we moved our radio into a number of podcast platforms. Podcast options are out there. People tune in. People listen. The Scattered Abroad Network, of which our brother Michael Clark is a part, and Caleb Rutherford, the lightnetwork.tv podcasts are left and right. Great opportunities to learn, to listen of doors that will open. It's amazing. There was a lady in the Bronx, New York that wrote us and said, I'd like to have some study material. We're not on the radio over the air in the Bronx, New York, but she heard us through the app of Amazon Music. That was amazing. And where it, there is no limit to throughout the world where people can download and listen. The power of online work, the power of podcast. All these things help us in teaching and preaching the gospel. The third O, over the air. For years, think of the success of In Search of the Lord's Way with Mac Lyon and now Phil Sanders. As a boy growing up in Nashville, if I heard it once, I heard it a dozen times on WSIX TV. Brother Ira North, when he'd look over at Nick Boone, Nick Boone, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. The amazing grace Bible class. The herald of truth with the late Batsel Barrett Baxter that began, get this, began on network television through the American Broadcasting Company or as we know it as ABC. The opportunity of how television in local markets, television opens up another avenue of people that will tune in, people that will watch. 
over the air. And what I mean by that is not only on cable, but people that are cutting their cords and antennas, how they can pull in channels with all kinds. Folks, I want to tell you, if there is a time that the Lord's church can take the gospel to all the world, I mean all the world, it's right now to every creation of every opportunity that is out there to use it, to teach and to instruct. I love to talk about the media here because it's a motivational thing for all of us to think about it for a moment. Take a home that wants to grow in Bible time. So they go to a YouTube channel. They find Kyle publications and they allow Joe Wells and his son Bennett to help them with the Bible time. Now watch how this works. What about... If you took a podcast and made that your daily devotional, something of which you listen. What about, and I did this recently, several years ago, but Don Blackwell did a great lesson in a marriage, uh, in a marriage track at Polishing the Pulpit. I use that in counseling couples that are going to get married. We're listening to it. And so that's where you create a worksheet to where they can follow along. You can use all kind of things like that. What about if you had a Bible class, maybe an adult Bible class or even a teen Bible class where each week you would present a different podcast and listen to a study. When I taught teens, I always would pick an app of the week and have teens download it on their phones or their iPads. An app of good, the Gospel Broadcasting Network, Apologetics Press, they're out there. What if we were to use that in a Bible class? I have known of Bible classes that will take their video system and project lessons from days gone by of speakers like Brother Wendell Winkler and Brother Garland Elkins and others. There's no limit, dear friends, to what we can do with the Gospel message. You see, we began tonight that they may teach others. That's our theme. That's our lesson. That they may teach others starting in the home, in the local church, the Bible school. Evangelistic telling others outside the church and the opportunities we have to supplement that through media and all these opportunities. Church, you put all that together. It's been my aim tonight to move this lesson that they may teach others to that we may teach others. Find that niche. Find that opportunity. Put that to use. Maybe there's been a couple of things said tonight that will be of help to you. I hope that it will and hope that it has been. You see what this is all about when we talk about teaching others. We did not move away from the lesson of which we teach. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Take an individual that committed a crime, a sin against someone else. And I've often said to myself, what if they would have heard the gospel 24 hours before. Could it have made a difference? Would they have heard something of that good news of Jesus Christ who came to die for them? Who came that they might have life that they would begin to think and start to move away from what they were about and what they were doing? You know, when Jesus brought the gospel to this earth, It's so simple to obey. I was very excited to see a post from Keith of my new brother in Christ this past Sunday night. I'm so delighted to see things of that nature. People are still seeking the gospel. People still want to know. They want to learn. They want to hear the simple truth. So many people are confused today. So many people are misled today and they're seeking and they're looking and all they want is the simple good news of Christ. 
to where that individual has something in that and in what they can believe in. They can believe in the gospel of Christ and they'll know that it is the message. That is what they have longed for. That is what they have looked for. Guaranteed, spiritually, not to splinter, split, bust, or break. That's what I'm looking for. I am looking for the Savior Jesus Christ and His good news and they will believe that. They will hear it. They will understand it. Matthew 15, 10. They will hear it from the Word of God. They will grasp it. They will hold to it. They believe it. And when they believe it, they're going to see the importance of making a change. They're going to take the right steps and they're going to do what they have to do. They're going to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and when they believe in Him, they're going to believe in His words. And they're going to believe in what He says. Whosoever shall confess Me before men, him will I confess before My Father which is in heaven. Matthew 10, 32. Confess Him. The life that I've been living, the struggles that I've been dealing with, confess Him. To simply say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Oh, you can guarantee that. They will confess Him just like Simon Peter made the confession in Matthew 16, 16. They'll learn how that eunuch made that confession in Acts 8 and verse 37. They will confess Him. They're going to believe the words of Jesus to repent of their sins. They've got a better direction ahead and they don't want to live in the direction they've been living. They're going to believe in the words of Jesus except you believe that I am ye. You should die in your sins. Except you believe you'll die in your sins. You don't want to remain in your sins. You can believe that I am He and repent of your sins. Change your decision and in turn change your direction. Well, I've lived such a bad life. I don't think there's enough blood that will forgive me. That's where you're wrong, my friend. And let me advise you on this. You stop being in the forgiving business and let God be in the forgiving business. You need to move yourself to the believing business. And if my God can create this beautiful world and everything therein in six days, if He can move away a stone from the tomb and raise up His Son and my Savior Jesus Christ after being in the grave for three days, if He can take a worldwide flood and not only let it come from above, but let it lift up below, if He can do all that, I know for certain He can take care of my sins, no matter what I've done, if I have repented of it. And to turn away from that old world that has dragged me down, that has pulled me down, that has ruined me. And to say, I'm not living that way anymore. I don't need to. And I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then we're buried with Him in baptism. Did you ever notice in the New Testament they never delayed that? Nobody delayed believing, nobody delayed repenting, nobody delayed confessing, and nobody delayed baptism. That very hour, that very day, they were baptized. They were baptized for the remission of sins, to have sins taken away, Acts twenty two sixteen. 16. They crucified that old man of sin. They put him to death, the one of whom they wanted to get rid And they were raised to walk in a newness of life. New creation in Christ Jesus. And begin that faithful walk with Him. Revelation 2.10 That walk in fellowship one with another. 1 John 1 verse 7 The blood of Jesus Christ continue to cleanse us. Ladies and gentlemen, that is an invitation that never gets old. It's an invitation that never gets worn out. And it is the, T-H-E, the best invitation for man to change his life, for a woman to change her life, for a household to change, and for an individual to be what God would have them to be. You see, that's why we teach others. Because praise God how He sent someone to teach us. And that is the Lord's invitation. If you've never obeyed the gospel of Christ, tonight is your night. 
Tonight is your night where you can put aside that life you're living and you can respond to our Lord Jesus Christ in obedience to His will. Dear brother or dear sister, you haven't walked faithful. You haven't been the teacher you need to be, the example you need to be. You see, in the church of Christ, we don't throw stones. We make sure we're standing upon the rock. And we help each other up on that rock. And the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And you've got everybody on your side. You just need to come back to the Lord's side to embrace His grace, to embrace His forgiveness. We will pray with you. We will pray for you. And restored and cleansed as if you had never sinned the beauty of justification. So whether you need to obey the gospel of Christ or come for prayer tonight, this is your best opportunity. Will you come as together we stand and while we sing? wonderful lesson. Uh, so happy to have uh, Jeff with us. Uh, BJ is, is still with us tonight as well, visiting. Uh, probably doesn't get to sit and listen as often as he would like, so you picked a good night to be here and to, to listen to Brother Jeff. All of us did. Um, we have one more announcement to add. There was a ninth grader by the name of Spencer uh, who goes to Spring Garden, correct? Uh, and um, and so they were killed in an ATV accident. Is am I did I get that correct? Yeah. So it's okay if I can read that. You can read the message.
Okay. So please keep this, the family of this young man, Spencer, if you will, in your prayers. It's sad news. Um, we got one more song left. JP's going to lead, and then Ben Hirsch is going to lead us in a word of prayer. I do want to thank uh, Brady Drake for leading our singing at the 645 uh, singing. He did a wonderful job. Number 731, if you would stand. Number 731. Sing the first verse, and then have our closing prayer. There's a call comes ringing o'er the restless way. Send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all the many blessings that you have blessed us with. Thank you for allowing us to come out here tonight to study another portion of your word to allow us to have safe travels here. Pray for safe travels back as we head back home, Father. Thank you for Mr. Jeff and the message that he brought to us about spreading your word, Father. Help us to always stay active in our community, spreading your word, Father. We pray for soft hearts that whoever we spread the gospel to, that they will believe and come to you before it's everlasting too late, Father. We pray for this kid that was killed from Spring Garden, Father. Pray for his family. Comfort them, Father. Pray for his, his school and the community around him, Father. Be with them. Help them to be comforted by you, Father, and get through this soon. Pray for our elders, Father, as they oversee us here. Help us to always do what they ask us to do and keep them encouraged and strengthened, Father. Pray for us, congregation. Keep us encouraged and strengthened to always do your will. Thank you for sending us down the cross for our sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>